scorn, scorn, scorn. Now this is a story. Four years ago, the sixth and seventh videos I made for this channel were on two very contrasting teams. One of them, Plucky Underdogs, who were overperforming for Squad of Nobodies. The other, a side who just cruised to a fourth European title and looked set to dominate the Champions Cup for years yet to come. And whilst some things have changed more than uh, of others, the other outstanding running team in Europe in rugby right now, the Scarlets. I don't think I ever would have foreseen what we saw on Saturday as those very two same teams played off for the biggest trophy in club rugby. La Rochelle regularly hosts a figure equivalent to 20% of the town's population and it felt like the other 80% had travelled down to Marseille as France's second city saw the top 14's greatest overachievers produce their club's greatest ever day. So... How did the one-time nobodies beat Exeter's promotion to European conquest record by two whole years? And how did they keep the overdogs in blue just so quiet all game? Here's the thing. Even after seeing Roman Salzi slap the trophy like it's a baby needing burping, I still think Leinster are probably, pound for pound, the best team in Europe. And that just makes the way Rompers O'Garlic's Rabelow Misfits threw them off even more impressive. Before the match, I think many expected a moment to come, as it so often does, where Ireland's answer the Monsters from Space Jam pulled away, leaving La Rochelle in the dust. And yet, at no point during the game did it ever feel like that was actually coming. La Rochelle making it feel like a permanent and effervescent scrap. This was probably the closest we came. After pounding away at the Port Town line, Leinster opt for three points here, figuring momentum is entirely with them, which it was. This is them putting the palm on the collar in order to grab the game by its proverbial neck. It's a bold back yourself, we'll get down here again and score more soon enough three-pointer. From the kickoff, La Rochelle target Gibson Park, having quite smartly put their key chaser Danny Preso on the diagonal so he can split this pod and approach cleanly in a straight line, only entering Kiwi Robert Eggers Island at the last second, but it's a brilliant, it really great clearance, preventing La Rochelle playing quickly and keeping Leicester marching forward despite surrendering possession. They withstand a pretty bullocking attack quite simply, and you can see from the chats then happening afterwards this scrum says. Even Bergeon here trying to warn his backline, never mind the hand. This is where Leinster are going to put their foot on the throat. They're quite evidently setting a multi-phase move that probably looks a little like this. 13 carries in with 12 clearing out, followed by a fast carry from a pod of three forwards simply to generate quick ball, whilst the rest of the backs flash this side to unleash some fancy bullshit afterwards with the La Rochelle pack strewn across the field after the scrum. However, Sinzel has lined up tight to Dante, meaning a straight carry would be a suicide mission, blowing him backwards being nailed, so Ringworth has to try and step around just to make a straight up carry. This buys La Rochelle's pack an extra second to set shape, seven of the eight forwards in defensive line by the time Ringworth takes contact. Lades then throws himself into the ruck, and whilst Henshaw clears him out simply, Dante is also on hand, and the sheer threat means both Van der Fleer and Lowe also enter, pulling two extra bodies up from the attack. Now up against a defence that has its key man exactly where it would want it. Aldri initially rushes up but glances at Maloney's support and instantly knows what's coming. The lock instantly drops to the floor, not looking to make ground, just to try and generate fast ball so they can attack next phase. Expecting it, Aldri plants his feet before Maloney even hits the ground, meaning he can swoop in the second he places the ball. Aldri knows there isn't a turnover chance here, but Leinster are hoping for a one second ruck, and Aldri slows it to be five before doing this, reaching over to slap Gibson Park's arm. Not the ball, his arm, meaning his aim is completely off. This was a clear tactic by La Rochelle, knowing even when they can't get Aldrit or her dad over to slow it down, they can trail a palm and throw Leinster's service right off. The ball bobbles along the floor and Leinster carry in well behind the gain line, a second phase in a row, with other bodies nowhere near where they wanted them, so junk food sex field drops back into the pocket and boots it away. With a pack as big as La Rochelle's, the temptation is often to make body blows, just as to lose it in the semi-final, to look to punch Leinster in the face, to try and knock them off the ball, thump them backwards and overpower them. La Rochelle instead kind of just made them really, really itch. You can stagger back to your feet after being glumped in the chops, but imagine the irritation if you desperately needed to scratch your back with both arms trapped in a cast the size of Will Skelton. The mistake many make when facing Leinster is to treat them like just another team. Leinster play probably more of 10 in the opposition 22 than any other team in the world. The ball still filtering through sex cases hands constantly and moves like this commonplace. Intricate running lines and delicate patterns drawing in defenders used to just fly 
drying up when close to the line. This will probably be commonplace at all levels in a few years' time, but for now it's a really unique threat in European rugby, and La Rochelle never underestimated that, attacking them in ways that were subtle, but never small. They knew urgency was the order of the day. Czech Skelton here literally shoving his teammates into the defensive line on the way to disrupting Leinster's first attack of the game. It begins with a lovely peel move to send Kelleher clattering into the defence, but the real ploy is second phase. The entire rest of the pack wrap around as decoys so they can feed sex sheep with Keenan and Ringrose giving different options to select from based on what decision rule makes here. However, this, like so many things in rugby, ends with a Gregory Aldrich turnover. So, what goes wrong? What goes wrong? As Kelleher carries, Dante steps in to bosh away Henshaw, putting him to the ground. Now this is tiny, but it just means there's a body in Gibson Box way for a split second, changing the timing of this whole move. Adapting to the pack's new tempo, Job pops sex drop, adjusts his footing, and Ringrose takes a few steps backwards so he can run the same line with the same timing but new positioning. Hugo Keenan, however, stays on the same spot. He does not adjust and runs the same line the same timing. He's literally just a fraction of a second off, but it means this pass then isn't realistic and means Rule can exclusively watch ring rows. Knowing either ball ends up as a hospital pass, Sex Banana takes it in himself, but with a burst of atrocious luck that just happens to be where Gregory Aldrich's remarkable work rate has taken him to. He gets over the ball first and knocks it loose, allowing his teammates to recover the ball. In the years since Larachelle was promoted from the Pro Day Duh, Leinster had only failed to score a try in Europe once. The 2018 showpiece where they triumphed over Racing thanks to a late kick by Issa Nafewa. To keep Leinster to just three pointers is a legitimately monumental achievement, and perhaps even more important than the three tries they scored themselves in a tale of how they went on to become champions of Europe. Which is, of course, the last time we were able to say such a thing, before next season the competition adopts a Eurovision approach to geography, and the winners become the champions of Europe and South Africa. And so, when Jolly Bum Sex Lamp comes to avenge this defeat next year, he could find himself travelling to South Africa to face perhaps the Stormers, but he'll definitely find himself up against some bull. Namely, pesky geo-blocking. Meaning Jort won't be able to watch, what do you mean the man like? Uh, top Gear? Top Gear. Thanks to that geo-blocking. However, all might be well if instead they get drawn with the sharks. Well, that is if they get drawn with the surf sharks. One of the fastest, safest, and most popular VPNs out there, Surfshark can help sex chicken enjoy peaky blinders on BBC iPlayer from anywhere in the world. With over 3,200 servers in 65 countries, no matter who lends the draw next season, Sex Rhombus will be able to access the good old Irish internet, some next level online security, and have access to the best catalogues, deals, whatever he likes from anywhere around the world. And he can get an even better deal right now if he heads to the link in the description and uses the offer code squid rugby to get 83% off and and three months for free but you'd have to imagine he's going to be avoiding youtube for at least the next few days or else face replays of lara shell's free excellent tries. In that video four years ago, I talked about how La Rochelle liked to play expansive rugby in compact spaces, but under Rotundo Goopstick, it's quite the inverse, playing direct rugby in expansive spaces. We see it here. Rule takes it in after the kick, and La Rochelle instantly spread it to the far touchline, and then over several phases, work it back to the opposite side before heading back to the right-hand touchline again. La Rochelle loads so many men into this kind of five-meter channel that whilst it's never a tries going chance, even though both teams know ring rows and low will cover the ball carrier, they don't know who that ball carry is going to be and it opens the smallest gap for Lades to just run it straight and then they work it back the other way rule popping off in midfield to fling it flat to Aldrich so he can carry once again incredibly straight just bashing forwards these plays aren't about creating chances they're simply about making ground sometimes just a couple of yards at a time that Rochelle are essentially playing a steady crash at one up rugby game but playing it in the lesser congested channels found near the touchlines. This kind of flat ball became a key weapon in achieving this. Because Leinster's defence relies on the winger drifting and covering for the more aggressive defenders inside them, La Rochelle looked to catch them out by throwing passes across the face of their own teammates that don't hang in the air long enough for the winger to adjust. It's really smart and worked really well for this kind of very crash-up type expansive rugby. And the passes across the face also caught Leinster out for the first try, phenomenally well finished by Raymond Rule. This whole play is just about trying to navigate La Rochelle's back out of the way of Leinster's pack about trying to manipulate the forwards to eventually create mismatches. So, La Rochelle put Aldrete in as the receiver on this lineup, which is almost always the indicator that teams are going to play a maul. But instead, Aldrete plays scrum half, with half the Leinster pack locking in to defend the maul. Aldrete instead draws Kelleher and sends Dante straight over the game line. 
Because he wasn't involved before, Scrath Bergeon can then approach the breakdown fresh and get the ball away quick whilst Leinster forwards are still working around the corner. Their opposite numbers flashing into view, but he skips it past them to West and in turn Sinzel, who then splits the two centres on the carry, meaning they both have to make the tackle. Because the type 5 is still folding from the previous phase, they all set approximate shape, still working round, especially if the two centres off their feet unable to organise. This leaves Furlong and Kelleher defending a 10 metre channel between them. Furlong has to watch for the main ball carrying threat Aldrete, whilst in a similar fashion to the aforementioned example here, O'Brien is torn between two attackers, Lades and Rule. He knows he'll make the tackle, but he doesn't know which one he'll be hitting. The skip pass causes both Leinster players to step in on Leeds, who has followed Bergeon's instructions to flood around the blind side. The winger uses the time he's gifted here to free an arm and unleash Rule, who goes full Abby Dow and screeches around the usually world-class defender Keenan in embarrassing fashion. It's an unbelievable, phenomenal finish, and just goes to show that even though in rugby they're known as laws, the game is better for having rules. Because... Rules are there for line breaking. Shoot in the face. The other two tries couldn't be more different. A superb mole, harder to stop than Jungleweed Sex Mike, on his way to a contract negotiation, and then an endless barrage, just as relentless as Sexport when asked how many more years he'd like to extend it by. This is one of the best defensive sets you'll ever see from Leinster, surviving La Rochelle attacks that are all incredibly disciplined. These final 12 minutes weren't necessarily intelligent or innovative. They just knew this was it. They had one chance to conquer Europe, to achieve all of their dreams, and these passages are more defined by what they don't do than what they do. There's no silly forced passes, no risky latches or panicked clearouts. They're happy to play slow because it means they can execute with accuracy, but they'll never be running the risk of blowing the chance. This starts to slowly sap at Leinster, and as they enter the 10th straight minute of hurtling port boys off their own line, the yellow and white gan find themselves eventually able to do just as they did for Rule's incredibly different try and manipulate the Leinster pack. With seven forwards tied in around this carry, and Alatoa focus on repelling the pick and drive, Jeremy Sinzel spots this gap and tries to hit it, except Larachow's focus remains accuracy. As Sinzel first approaches, a clean pass probably puts him between Alatoa and McGrath and over the line he scores, but that pass would need to be fast, flat, and hence risky, potentially knock onable. So Sinzel instead is forced to hit the same line from a standing start, meaning McGrath can react in time. However, the different kind of challenge that this presents draws in ring rows and then presents fresh ball for Skelton to carry off. And so, the biggest human to never be born up a beanstalk draws the entire Leinster pack in, whilst Ringrose, just getting up from the tackle on Sinzel, is assessing the backs. He's looking both sides, checking where is needed, checking the wide channels, wanting to know whether or... Ah! Boom! Arthur Terrier, a utility back who hasn't played scrum off in three years, spots his chance. He darts over Ringrose, too busy organising to just make the tackle, and reaches out to score the try that's in the top 14's tiniest town into meltdown. La Rochelle has a population of 75,000. That's the smallest pool of any team in Europe's three top flight leagues. Their budget might have swelled since the days of raiding bargain bins I discussed four years ago, but they're still in the bottom half of the top 14 spenders chart and reportedly paying significantly less than Leinster. A lot has changed since I made that video a whole World Cup cycle ago, but one thing that's never shifted is La Rochelle's spirit their togetherness, their camaraderie, and their clear relationship with their staggering number of fans. They've long since been the club that we kind of all secretly wanted a club to be like. And now they've achieved the thing we all desperately, publicly want our club to do. Beat the best and leave no doubters wondering. La Rochelle are now the champions of Europe. And who knows what the next four years could hold. Hello, it's the decrepit corpse of the person that made that La Rochelle video four years ago talking. Uh, thank you for watching that. Thank you, it's been, I can't believe it's actually four years and we've been doing this so long, but there's so much more to come yet. Uh, Going to look at Les Tigers and how they've been getting on since on the club rugby stint as well. There's plenty more coming in sort of international vein. I just did a massive deep dive into Eddie Jones, if you want to go and look at that. Um, there's one on France as well, as one on Red Roses, uh, who have been incredibly dominant over the last... A bunch of time. Um, there's loads more about. Please go and have a nosy around. Please go and have a mosey around. Please don't do anything that rhymes with that. And I'll see you very soon for more stuff.
literally what it's about in European rugby. You know, you are the envy. <laughs> you are the... Let go of his hat.